Amen. You are welcome to the ch to church today, and um, we want to thank God for a new a new day and a new month. In fact, a new week as well. To God be the glory in Jesus' name. Our theme, by the grace of God, we know that today is Thanksgiving in the Redeemed Christian Church of God all over the world. Every first Sunday is a Thanksgiving Sunday. We thank God for what God has done the previous month. And we are sure that if Christ tarries, we are going to see many more days in Jesus' name. Our theme for the month of November is Holy Spirit Divine. Can we say together, Holy Spirit Divine. Praise the Lord. So this morning, quickly, of course, we have a lot of activities lined up today, and I'm sure God will bless you today in Jesus' name. Um, I will be speaking on the spirit, the spirit of growth, the spirit of growth, and I'm going to take um, the the text from one of the parables of Jesus Christ of the Kingdom in Luke chapter 13, Luke 13. Um, from verse 18. Luke 13 from verse 18. What is the kingdom of God like? Then he said, this Jesus saying here, then he said unto them, unto what is the kingdom of God like? And whereunto shall I resemble it? It is like a grain of mustard seed which a man took and cast into his garden and it grew. That's where our topic is from the text of today. And it grew and waxed a great tree, and the fowls of the air lodged in, its, in the branches of it. Verse number 20. And again he said, Whereunto shall I liken the kingdom of God? It is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, till the whole was leaven. Amen. Another scripture I'm going to read quickly, Luke chapter 2 verse 40. And the child grew. Can, we, can you display it? Okay. If you are there, can we read it together? It doesn't matter the version. But look 240. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It says, Where unto shall I liken the kingdom of God? He said, it is like a grain of mustard seed. In fact, I had one of our sisters that went to Jerusalem two, three years ago, brought a bottle of um, uh, mustard seed. And I actually told the ushers if they could send it around so that people can see what it looks like. Praise the Lord. He said, it's like a mustard seed, which a man took and cast into his garden. And it grew and waxed a great tree. And the fowls of the air lodged in its branches. Quickly, I'm going to quickly bring out seven things. Seven things. The first is in that verse is seed. That seed here represents Jesus Christ. If you go with me to Micah chapter 5 and verse 2. Micah 5 and verse 2. It says, But thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little, among the thousands of Judah. Yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going, goings forth have been from hold, from of hold, from everlasting. Can you see? That seed, very small, very little, is talking about Jesus Christ. Even though Jesus Christ was to come from a city, the lowest city in Judah. Judah is the smallest and also... The city there, Ephrata, the, lit, the littlest city from the smallest family and also the smallest individual. He said, but out of you shall come forth he that is to be the he that is to be the greatest. Amen. He that is to be the greatest. Now the second thing there is which a man took. That man there is a replica of the father, God the father. In John 15, Chapter 1, uh, verse 1, Jesus said, my father is the husband man. So that man there is God the father. The third thing I want to quickly bring out there is the garden. Amen. The garden is the earth. You remember in Genesis chapter 2, God planted a man in the garden of Eden for him to tend it, to manage it, 
Amen. So that garden is the earth. Amen. And the fourth thing you need to know, you also need to see in that verse is, and it grew, and it grew. In other words, for somebody, for something to, to grow, it means there is life in it. All right? There is life. Every child of God has life in him. Every plant you see outside has life in it. That's why it can grow. Every little baby that you see has life in him or her. Okay, that's why. So, they, 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 and it grew. So, that means there is life in it. So, when you say there is life in somebody, that means there is the presence of the Holy Spirit. All right? So, we, without the Holy Spirit, you cannot grow. So, the fifth thing I want you to see in that verse is that it, and it works a great tree. All right? That tree is Jesus Christ becoming the great supplier. Can you see that seed became a tree? That seed grew up to become a big tree. Okay? Meaning that tree became a big, all right, the supplier. Remember um, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So, he is there as the provider. He is there as a supplier. He is there as a sustainer. Hallelujah. Then the sixth thing in that verse is, he said, the fowls of the air. Okay? So, what does that mean? It talks about, he said, they came to the tree and they, you know, they lodged there. So that means that tree had grown so much, the capacity is so high that it could take care. So that the fowl there is a, is a representation of the needy, the poor, the sick, the lame, the blind, the hunger, the hungry, okay, the, the homeless, the jobless. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Matthew eleven twenty eight says, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heaven laden, and I shall give you rest. So the tree has grown because the Holy Spirit has been able to inject power and life into that seed. And the seed became very great. And the seventh thing in that verse that you need to know and take home is that it says, and the fowls of the air, they lodged in its branches. Okay, that branch is you. John chapter 15 from verse 1 to verse 5. Say, you are the branches. Amen. So that branch is the believer, the soul that is saved. John, in Revelations also, 5 and verse 10, 11 and 12, he said that we, the children of God, we have become kings and priests unto the Lord. Hallelujah. And unto his Christ. So here, there's, those are seven great things that if we begin to pick them one by one, we can't finish them in another six months. But I'm just going to paraphrase in the next few minutes and the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. So we said the first, the seed, the first one is the seed, which is Jesus Christ, Mark, Micah 5, 2. The, the man there, okay, that took the seed and went and planted the seed, is God the Father. And the garden is the earth, Genesis chapter 2. We said also that it grew. Talks about um, that there is life in it. Talks about the presence of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, except a kind of weight falls down and dies. It abides alone, but when it dies, it's able to expand and enlarge. All right? And number five, we said the tree is Jesus Christ, the seed becoming a big tree. Hallelujah. Meaning that is the great provider, is the great supplier. And the sixth thing there is that the fowls of the air, the needy, those who need something. You know, the poor, the lame, the blind, and every one of them, the homeless, the hunger, the those in the jail, and all that, they are there to receive from the big tree. And we say the branches, you and I are the branches. Hallelujah. So what do we learn from this parable? Seven things, and we shall be done with the session. Amen. The first thing about the, the, the first thing we need to learn today is the mustard seed. The mustard seed. The mustard seed is not easily seen. In fact, if, you, if I drop it on the floor, you will never, never find it. You will never, and I bet you, you cannot find it. If I drop it on the floor here, you, can, you can't find it. So the mustard seed represents, okay, something that is insignificant, unuseful to many, all right? Tiny things, little things, little stuff. Many of us are carrying mustard seeds without knowing, brothers and sisters. 
How are you treating your mustard seed? All right? The Bible says God had a mustard seed, very insignificant, hidden, covered up. You cannot see it. But the Bible says God saw potential in that seed, and God went and put that seed under the ground. Amen. Remember the woman with the, with the, whose husband had died in 2 Kings chapter 4? The Bible said the woman, you know, was hoeing. The creditors had come. They were coming to take the two sons to become bondmen. But the Bible made us to understand the woman had a mustard seed. Okay, not a mustard seed. She had oil, which is like a mustard seed. And she didn't know. Many of us are like that. We have a great mustard seed that God has put in your hand. But you only, the only thing you did to it was just to keep it somewhere. In the storage. Some maybe in the garage. Some in the basement. Some in your car. Very insignificant. Amen. Many people also look at themselves as mustard seeds. As if they are not significant. As if they are not important. Let me tell you, God knows you. He knows the number of the air on your head. He knows your name. He knows your address. All right? And God has also planted you on the surface of the earth as a mustard seed. Because God is expecting something great to happen in your life that you will become a sustainer to nations, that you will lend unto nations, that you'll be a blessing to people, that through you, healings will take place, deliverance will take place, mercies will be revealed, and that is what God is doing. Praise the name of the Lord. The people in Numbers 13, 33 says we are like grasshopper. They didn't look at, they didn't think any good, good thing could come out of them. Praise the name of the Lord. So I want to beg you in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus was a mustard seed, but yet it grew so much. I don't know how many millions and billions and hundreds of millions of souls have been saved. Those that have gone to heaven and those that have been saved every day and those that are serving God faithfully. Why? Because one man was able to die in the earth. Praise the name of the Lord. The second thing I want you to quickly learn is that the Bible says a man took it. Amen. A man took it. That means for God to have taken a mustard seed, he must have looked at the potentials in that mustard seed. He must have looked at that mustard seed and know oh, there is something in this mustard seed that is going to grow. The man, God had vision. God had great vision for the health, for salvation of souls. That's why he didn't keep. Imagine if God had kept that mustard seed in heaven. There wouldn't have been any soul saved on earth. But the Bible says God sought potential in him and in that seed and planted that seed. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, people, when God begins to do what he wants to do, people cannot ignore you. You cannot be ignored. Hallelujah. All right? So please be like God. Don't ignore that mustard seed. Don't ignore that grace. Some will keep it. Some will sweep it away. Some will give it out. Some will put it in the, in the storage. Some will make it a souvenir. All right? And some people will just play with it. Please, you better believe in what God is doing, doing in your life. Never look down on yourself. If you are born again, if you are not born again, you can accept him today. But if you are born again, look at yourself as somebody that is very precious. A battle acts in the hands of God. Somebody that would bring salvation to nations. That would bring deliverance to those who are sick and oppressed. That will open blind eyes. Look at yourself that the grace of God is upon your life. Don't allow that 9 to 5 job of, of 5 p.m. to 9 a.m. job destroy what God wants to do in your life. You are here for something that is bigger than that. May God find you faithful in the name of Jesus Christ. So God saw potential. You need to have vision. You need, to, you need to, to, to take that seed by faith. Don't allow that mustard seed to die in your hand. Because God did not allow you to die. Hallelujah. So don't allow that potential to die in the inside of you. Don't allow the grace of God to die. Some of you can prophesy. Some of you can pray. You can do something in the house of God. 
The Bible said that man took it and put it, even though it's so insignificant, it's so tiny, it's so small, but the moment that thing hit the ground, something began to happen. May something begin to happen in your life from today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you have to take your life, you have to take that seed by faith, make a move, seize the opportunity around you. I wrote something here, I said, seeing Having a seed and seeing without an action will lead to frustration, will lead to disappointment. Bible says from the days of John the Baptist together until now, Matthew eleven twelve, 12, it said the kingdom of God suffereth violence and the violent they take it by force. The man took it by force and put it in the ground. May God help you to discover it in Jesus' name. The third thing quickly, because of our time, it says that he cast it into his garden. They cast it. The garden before them was lying fallow. Remember Jeremiah 4, 3 says, he says, you say, break up your fallow ground. All right? And so not among tongues. There is something that is lying fallow in your life, which if you are able to see the seed, okay, and discover the fallow ground, I'm telling you, the result will be something that you, you yourself, you cannot, you won't be able to control it. There was potential in the seed. And there was a greater potential in the garden. When opportunity meets with great potential, your destiny is on the way. Your destiny is attainable. Hallelujah. Until you try, you never know what can happen in your life. Amen. The work of the Holy Spirit is to make you to grow. You may look at yourself as insignificant. But there is a fallow ground which you have not discovered. And there is a seed also which you are keeping. In your store. May God help you to break that fallow ground. And may God help you to discover that seed today. In the name of Jesus. This is where we are going to. The fourth thing that you need to know about this parable. It grew. Amen. The Bible says, and Jesus grew. Amen. And became strong in the spirit. He grew. And he, began, and he became strong in the spirit. The main work of the Holy Spirit in you is your growth in the spirit. Your growth in the spirit will help you, will affect every area of your life. If you are not growing in the grace of God, if you are not growing in prayer, if you are not growing in Bible study, if you are not growing in the things of the spirit, even the things around you will be affected adversely. It will be affected. Praise the Lord. The work of the Holy Spirit is to make your spirit, your soul, and your body to grow. There is no way you will connect with the Holy Spirit. There is no way you will walk by the Spirit. There is no way you walk in the Spirit without having revelation of where you are going. There is no way you will walk in the grace of God and you are growing as the Holy Spirit is pumping you up and helping you that you will not begin to walk in the right direction. Why many are suffering? It's not because there is no job there. It's not because they cannot pass the exam. It's not because they cannot, it's just because they lack the instruction of the Holy Spirit. And if you don't work with the Holy Spirit, how can you get this instruction? How can? It is not possible. If you look at Ezekiel, and the Lord spoke to me, and the Lord said, and the word of the Lord came, and the word of the Lord came, and the word of the Lord came, and the word of the Lord came. In John 1, 1, and this is the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. John 1, John 1, 1, that which we have heard in the beginning, which we have seen, which we have heard of the word of life, the same we present to you. That man is Jesus Christ. Everything is the word. Everything is about the Holy Spirit. Don't shortchange yourself. Don't allow the story, CP24, CNN, to shape your life. Oh, Joe Jones, they are going down. Then you begin to cry. Why are you crying? Amen. Your blessing, your progress in life is not based on what you see. Amen. That seed must go into the ground. And once it goes into the ground, the Bible says it grew. Why? The Holy Spirit comes alive. May the Holy Spirit come alive in your life. Everything you've lost, I pray that the Holy Spirit will help you to rediscover it. Whatever has been stolen from you, I pray that you will discover it and get it back. It's not when you cry or weep. First, first Samuel 30. Dave, everybody, imagine men crying from morning till night until there was no energy to cry. I've not seen those kind of men before. God have mercy. You know, men are so strong, their eyes are like, shh. It's the women that cry quickly. But for men to cry, 
But the Bible says after David cried and cried, you see, when you cry from morning till night, nothing changes. In fact, the situation will get worse. But the Bible said David did what? And energy, how the energy came from only God. When we get to heaven, we'll know. The man just, the energy just came, and the man began to say, no, 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 cry. He stopped crying. He left the people, and he began to go to God. Capacity came. Energy came. The life of God came. And he went, and God said, well, I don't know why you are crying. You have lost 24 hours or 12 hours already. You better go and fight. You are going to recover. And the man went, and he recovered. Praise the Lord. May you recover all in Jesus' name. Let me tell you, we are growing up into the image of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 3, 16, 17, 18. The Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And we, with open faith, beholding us in the glass, the glory of the Lord, are transformed, are metamorphosed, okay, into his image from glory to glory. There has to be a transformation. The Holy Spirit wants you to grow. The Holy Spirit wants you to grow into the image of Christ. He wants you to like Christ, to be like him in conduct, in behavior, in thinking. Why? The Bible says the, 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 the Berean Christian, they saw Jesus, they saw the disciples, and they said, wow, these are Christians. First time in the Bible, people said these are Christians. It wasn't, you know, it was the Holy Spirit that prompted and said, these are like Christ, and began to call them Christians. Praise the name of the Lord. Until you grow up spiritually and mentally, you cannot be a blessing. You cannot become that tree. The fowls of the air will come and perch on. I beg you in the name of Jesus, please grow in the grace of God. Grow in your word. When things happen, don't go to the internet first to find a cause of that thing. Go to the Holy Spirit and ask him. And ask him and pray. Study the word of God. And you see what is going to happen. Permit me quickly, five more minutes. Um, we we'll take the fifth one. The fifth one. Let me share one testimony quickly, one story. You see, you must grow. You must grow to a capacity where you can say no, where you need to say no. Hallelujah. There was a, a somebody died in a church. The man had trouble, is a troublemaker, was a troublemaker in that church. And when it was, he died. The pastor was already thinking what he was going to say about the man at the burial. <laughs> so the older brother, the younger brother of this guy came from another part of the country, said, Pastor, I need a church account number, please. The Lord is leading me to pay $2 million into the account. So they gave it to the man. The man paid the money. And the man said, I would like to see the pastor. So he went and saw the pastor and said, Pastor, please. I know my brother is like this, but please, on, his, on that day of the burial, please, just say some good things about him. So it was then the pastor knew that, why he, that was why he paid that money to the account. So the pastor now was thinking what was going to happen that day. So all eyes were on him. So when he now wanted to talk, he said, well, all I know is that the man that died was better than the man that is alive. <laughs> Just to, just one statement to, to help himself. You see, you must grow. Amen. There are situations that, will, that, will face, that you will face as a child of God. And it is when you grow, you'll be able to say no and say yes to certain things. May you grow in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May you grow to say no. And may you grow to say yes in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The fifth thing, and it works a great tree. Imagine that mustard seed. Has it been, did you see, did it, was it passed across, across? Did you see how small it is? How tiny? If you put it in your pocket, you may not find it again. Praise the Lord. That is how it is. But this seed grew to become a mighty tree. Amen. You have no idea what you can become in the near future. You have no idea the plan, say, eyes have not seen. He has have not heard, neither has the heart of man perceived what I have planned. If only they will grow. If only they will grow. If only they will connect with me. If only they will connect with the word of God. They have no idea. And many of us, we are shortchanging ourselves. May you grow in the name of Jesus Christ. May you wax a great tree in the mighty name of Jesus. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. High, 2, 9. Highs have not seen, he has not heard. Neither has the heart of man perceived it. 
Joseph never believed, even though he saw the revelation, but he never believed it was going, he was going to be the prime minister. How God was going to do it, he didn't know. But the Bible says, and he grew. Amen. That's why he was able to say to Potiphar's wife, no man. He went to prison. Many of us are afraid to go to prison. And until you go to prison, you cannot become a prime minister. You must be ready to say no. Compromise is no, don't even go near it. The Lord will help you in Jesus' name. The sixth thing, the tree produced a very strong and supportive branch or branches. It produced very strong branches. I'm seeing very strong branches of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing strong branches of Messiah. I'm seeing people that will represent Jesus Christ in the society, in the institutions, in the banks, in the government, uh, in the in the in the financial industry. Everywhere you go, I see great branches sitting here today. Amen. God has anointed you to sustain and give life to nations of the world. See many how many people are serving God. How many people are serving God every day all over the world? People that are going to church that are worshiping God in their closets from one mustard seed. I tell you, you are, you have no idea what God has put in the inside of you. You have no idea where God is taking you to. Please, I beg you, go back and begin to grow. And number seven, which is the last one, the fowls came and lodged in his branches. Fowls here, like I did say before, they signify the needy, the poor, the destitute, the unbelievers, unbelievers, you are in that organization for you to evangelize that organization. I worked in one, in one organization some years back, and I had opportunity to travel, you know, to different um, stations, you know, islands, and so on and so forth. And I had that, on a particular year, I had a sheet of paper, and I wrote the names of all the stations. And each time I preach and I share the tracts, I would tick it. And I was able to, that year, I preached in over 100 places. And the moment I covered all the places on that sheet, you know what happened? There was a transfer letter for me to go to another, to go to and work in another division. And I knew without hesitation that my assignment in that area was completed. Even though I was working, I was earning my income. But God has given me another assignment. God has another assignment for you. Where you are working, where you are schooling, wherever you are in the community. May God find you faithful in the mighty name of Jesus. The sick, those who are sick, those who are oppressed, they, are, they want to, sh- they are looking for that branch. They are looking for that tree to help them. And you are that branch. Because as long as you are connected to the main tree, which is Jesus Christ, you will supply the needs It's not about money alone. You will supply spiritual needs, physical needs, emotional needs, support, and prayers. May God strengthen you in the name of Jesus. As I round up, Matthew 11, 28 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I don't know if today you are still troubled. You are not born again. But you know that everything around you is from one trouble to the other. I've spoken to a few people who have been in this nation for 30 years, 40 years, who are still suffering. If you are among them, come unto Jesus Christ today. He's going to be your succorer. He's going to strengthen you. He's going to help you. All the lost years, all the lost days, he's going to replenish them in the mighty name of Jesus. Please bow down your head this morning. This is the word of God. I don't know if you're here. Please don't allow religion Don't allow what people will say, what people will think to take you away from the presence of God. If you're here, you're not born again. You know you're not born again. You've gone to church before. It doesn't matter. You've gone to church before. You've gone to places of worship. But you know deep down that if Jesus Christ comes today, you may not make it. Today is another opportunity. 2 Corinthians 6, 2, you say today is the accepted time. Now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. Don't postpone it, my brother. Don't postpone it, my sister. Can I see your right hand or your left hand? If today is, you want to make it a new day, a new dawn, a new thing to begin to happen in your life. Can I see your right hand or your left hand? Or maybe you are backsliding. It's the same thing. Backslider and unbeliever, they are in the same category because they are heading in the same direction. If you're here, I want to quickly pray with you. I've already overshot my time. 
Okay. Maybe if you're online, also, you can just put under the chat, put your name, and maybe your email, we will reach out to you. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you. We give you all the glory for your word this morning. The spirit of growth and the child grew. I pray for your sons and daughters that have heard your word this day. Let your power raise them up. Let your power strengthen them. Let them grow spiritually. Help them to grow materially. Help them to grow mentally, socially, economically, in every area of endeavor. That family shall not die like that. That family will grow in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that your power will rest upon your children and your grace will be more than sufficient. Let this word that we've heard in the house, Lord, start a new era in our lives. Holy Spirit, please do your work. Manifest yourself a great deal. To you be glory forever and ever. For Jesus, they will pray. God bless you.